Hello everybody, and hi Cinevan. Welcome to part two of the questions and answers sessions. There's probably going to be at least four parts to this, maybe a fifth, we'll see. It depends on how many questions we could ask. So, moving right along, how did it feel the first time Cinnamon took a nap on top of you? Well, it definitely felt good. Because you're a little heater, aren't you, little buddy? Yeah. Now, if I've kind of felt like I really accomplished something to gain his trust, especially with the cat, because they're not the most trusting creatures. So, it definitely felt good in that regard. Does Cinnamon follow you everywhere once you reach home? How has Cinnamon changed your life, routines, etc.? It depends. If he's inside all day and I get home from work, the, usually the first thing he wants to do is get outside. He'll Usually he's, he meets me kind of in the middle right there, right in front of that green little wall there. And he'll want to go outside typically because when, he, when he's cooped up inside all day, he gets a little cabin fever, I think. And sometimes he's happy to see me. If he's outside and I get home from work, usually he knows when I, as soon as I'm home from work. Then he'll want inside and we'll give him a nice little hug. So it really depends on where he is at the time I get home from work. How has it changed my life, routines, etc.? Well, a lot of my life now is, is spent on putting together videos and sharing Cinnabon with everybody, which is a good thing. I enjoy doing that. And I'm sure a lot of you enjoy watching it, which is what keeps us going, right? And... As far as routines, oh yeah, I get up a little earlier every day now, especially to let him out because he usually wants out between 4 and 6 in the morning, depending on the weather and, and conditions and stuff. Although this morning he slept in until like 9.30 with me, which is kind of cool. So I get up a little earlier. Uh, obviously, I, I try not to stay out too late knowing he's there and I can't just leave for more than a long, you know, a while, knowing that I have a responsibility at home to take care of you, you know? If you could know the absolute and total truth to one question, what question would you ask? Wow. There's a two-putter, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer the first part first before going on. If I could know the absolute truth to one question, that's crazy. Hmm. What would I ask? I haven't thought I should have thought about that before I started recording, huh, buddy? I guess to keep it relevant, I'd really like to know where Cinnamon really came from. I've been approached by dozens of people online claiming he's their cat. The odds of even one of those persons being correct is not high at all. And no, nothing against Cinnabon, but he's a fairly common cat. There's a lot of long-haired orange cats. But anyway, I won't get on, get on that. But uh, I would love to know where he really came from. My best theory is that he was dumped out here by a family or somebody. I didn't like him. Although his tipped ear is interesting because that, that's an indication he's feral and was not pleased when he was caught. So, and he did act pretty wild at first, so maybe he was mistaken as a feral when he was caught. He had sort of reverted to a more wild state, but who knows. Next part of the same question. Also, if you could ask advice from any historical figure, who would it be and what would you ask them? That's a great question. I would more than likely talk to General and President George Washington. That would be cool. I mean, who wouldn't want to talk to that guy? And I would ask him clarification on the Second Amendment, and I'm pretty sure he would say, yeah, it means keeping the people as equally armed as the military. But I would ask for clarification, and I would try to document his answer as best as I could to settle that debate. I have a question. Would you ever consider selling Cinnamon calendars or shirts? Absolutely. I am in sort of early stages of development for shirts. I have no idea when it's going to happen, but I am working with somebody on at least shirts and some other merchandise. Calendars would be cool, too. I don't have a whole lot of time for that, unfortunately. A lot of you have asked about that. And it does take a tremendous amount of time and money to get that stuff even just set up. So it's definitely in the works. When it's going to happen, I don't know. I'd like to have it happen before the end of this year, but I can't guarantee that. But I would for sure like it. I have a couple plans, too, and, and the funny phrases and stuff that I don't want to say right now. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool once, it, once and if it ever gets off the ground. Good question. Do you ever think about getting more cats or any other pets? Not really. I have a feeling that Cinnabon wouldn't get along with any other pets. He he almost always reacts negatively to other animals. And I think because he's out in the streets, if you will, in the jungle <laughs> by himself, he sort of a, has, still has a survivor mentality. He doesn't want to share that with anyone. And there's are cats like that. I've seen cats up for adoption that say, in their little description, says they prefer to be by themselves. <laughs> no other, even human kids, they, they just like to be them, themselves and their owner. Or their slaves, if you will. What little things does cinema do every day that make you laugh and smile? Oh man, all kinds of stuff. I would say 
it's really weird when I get out of bed or whatever, he always gets out and right to the right of those flags where it's level up, up on the stairs. He'll just drop right there and look at me no matter what he wants. He'll just lay down and kind of stare at me and then I'll pet him for a little bit. And he, I just like how he randomly just drops. So just kind of like, almost like those goats, those fainting goats that just get stiff and they just tip right over. He kind of does that. And you've seen that in a video a few times. So I like that. There's so many other ones I, I could go on and on. How he waits for me when I get out of the shower. When I open the shower door, he almost always reacts as if he's terrified at first. Like he wasn't expecting it. Then he'll follow me in my closet where I get dressed. It's like a walk-in. And he'll just, he'll yell at me. It's kind of annoying because I'm like getting dressed and this, he's just yelling at me while I'm getting dressed. Like, how dare you get dressed and not play with me. So he's very attention seeking, which is okay. It might be because he was abandoned and I, I get that, right? So it's not really his fault. Are you guys in lockdown and are the streets empty? This is a two-parter. I'll start with the first part. Lockdown, I th Michigan has an executive order right now that says... Stay home, stay safe, I think it is. Unless you are essential, an essential employee and going to work and back or going to the grocery store or picking up takeout or have to deliver or bring something to somebody who is under your care, you cannot be driving around. So that's, a lot of people are not really following that. And I know that it is being enforced a little bit. I've heard stories of people getting pulled over going to work. I haven't been yet, but yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's a little weird. I get why they're doing it, but what's wrong with just, going for a drive and not even talking to anyone, right? I've talked about this with my dad and other people. Just going for a drive at night. What's wrong with that? You're not going anywhere. And there are, you can ride your bikes. You can walk on the streets. So there are people walking on the streets more so than normal. <laughs> Excuse the sound, I'm burning a mixed CD. Yep. People still do that. Oh, it's done. Anyway, cool. Okay, so moving along, the, another part of that same question. How are you and Cinnamon handling the pandemic and social distancing? Cinnamon is totally indifferent. He probably has no idea what's going on, which is good. And I've mentioned that before, how it's kind of funny. Social distancing, I'm probably not handling it as well as I should as far as me. I'm probably going out more than I should, but I don't really care. I think it's kind of, it's just one of those things where I just don't like Big Brother telling me what to do, I guess. But within reason, I suppose. I, I totally understand why, but uh, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Are you an essential or a non-essential worker? I was considered or am considered an essential worker. So I got a nice little letter from my company where I'm still working. And, and some people might think, and even I do that, oh, that's kind of a bummer because I don't really get a break. But at least I got a job making money. I can't complain because a lot of people don't. And I really feel for those people, especially those who work for companies that aren't really handling it all that well. So it really does suck too for those, if anyone has lost their healthcare benefit. Man, it's like almost not, not quite a paradox, but what if you really need it and they don't have a job? It just really sucks. So my heart goes out to those people for sure. My question is when will you come or can you come out with merch of, cine, of baby cinnamon, please? Oh, I already kind of answered that before. It's in the works, we'll see. Not sure exactly when. It really depends. A lot of stuff's going on, of course. If you turned into a cat, what do you think you would look like? Maybe similar to Cinnamon? I don't know. I guess I'd go up with my hair color. I'd be, I haven't really seen many brown cats, but I guess I'd be a, a light brown cat. <laughs> Maybe. I, I don't know. That's a great question. How often do you bathe or groom Cinnamon? I brush him every once in a while. Probably not as much as I should. He does enjoy it. And I don't, I never bathe him. I don't believe cats need to be bathed unless they're sick or have a problem, like a flea issue. But he is self-cleaning. He always bathes himself and he's always looked good since I've seen him. Except for I do help him get burrs out and stuff like that. Do you know what type of cat Cinnabon is? This is a lot of questions here. I'm going to kind of go one at a time. Okay, what type of cat Cinnabon is? I am told or was told by the vet that he is of domestic long hair. A lot of other people, including myself, have suggested or believe he is also part, not whole, part Maine Coon or Norwegian forest cat because he's not as heavy as those. He's not 20 pounds. He's like 10 pounds, but he does have a lot of traits and visual characteristics of those breeds. What is yours and Cinnabon's favorite Star Wars movie? My favorite Star Wars movie is going to be a tie between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. So the original one from 77 and the last one that George Lucas did. Which is, it's unfortunate that he didn't do anything with the sequels, but I won't get on that subject. But definitely Revenge of the Sith. Is there anything Cinnabon doesn't like? Hmm. Yeah, if I don't pay attention to him, he gets kind of mad. Um, he doesn't mind being carried or cradled. At first he didn't like it. Uh, that's pretty much it. He doesn't like to be padded, but that's normal, like a, a dog. I learned that early on. 
that's pretty much it. What else do I, I'm trying to think of what ticks him off. I try not to upset him too much. Sometimes if I'm petting him while he's playing, he doesn't like it and he bites me like lightly. Do you have to train him in any way? Not really, unless I'm like doing it and not even realizing it. Is there an address that we could use to send gifts to Cinnabon? No, and I've kind of talked about this before. We have everything we need and more. And I really do appreciate all the kind gestures with gifts and things like that, and letters and, and artwork and things of that nature, but really don't need it. And there are plenty of other cats out there and, and animals in general who need homes or food, clean water, that kind of thing that really should be the focus of that adoration and, and love and not us. But I do appreciate it, of course. Are you going to do a base pause DNA test on Cinnamon to find out what his lineage is and for potential health problems? More than likely, I don't know when I'll do that, but I'd be really interested. In, I don't like the DNA test stuff, and I would hate for me to send in his DNA and then have him linked or somebody in his Cinnamon's family linked to a crime, but we'll see. Have you had any more sightings of the orb? Not that I know of. I've seen a couple weird things flying around the house, but I think some of it could just be artifact from lighting and stuff like that. But that's something, I don't know, and I've had guests and even family stay here before and say, hey, there's something that's kind of just a little weird. I have no idea. I guess that case is open on that. Hopefully it's nothing. If it is something uh, paranormal, it's not, I don't believe it's unfriendly, so that, that's good. But there's definitely some odd things. A lot of you pointed it out. In the last video I did about the orb or whatever that was caught on camera, many of you pointed out other things in film I never noticed and I look back and I'm like oh my goodness there's tons of other stuff that I totally missed and Cinnamon was in an overall weird mood so this doesn't happen a lot it's kind of an, it's very infrequent so whatever if it is something it, it's dormant a lot or just passes by I don't I have no idea I don't understand that realm but it's, it's definitely interesting and a little a little weird sometimes are you still working, Lex? Yeah, yep, I'm still, I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I'm still, still working. Sometimes from home, sometimes from work. Stay warm and chill, hoping this crisis will be over soon. Oh, I, I totally agree, and I appreciate those thoughts. And those same thoughts for me, instead of I go out to all of you two going through the same thing. When you said I'm not really a cat person, you mentioned something about smells. Does your house smell of cat? No, not that I know of, but I guess you can ask my guests and family that come over. I don't think it does. I, I don't know. Maybe I wasn't using enough litter at first. A lot of people do that. I've noticed where they don't use enough litter. I have a lot of litter now in his litter box. I don't notice it hardly at all. The only time I ever do is if he just lays a nasty fresh one in the basement and then I notice it down there and I take care of it. But I really don't notice. And maybe you just get used to it. But I do know of cat people before I was a cat person that had one or two cats in their houses didn't smell, they, their houses didn't smell at all. So I guess it is possible, and I would hope that mine doesn't either, and I don't think it does. Hey, Lex. Hello. So if Cinnabon was a Star Wars character, who would he be? Wow, what a great question. I look like, I would say, because he's really furry, maybe Chewbacca, or an Ewok, something of like that. I think an Ewok, I'd probably go with Ewok with the size. Now, if he, my, hmm, I'm trying to think of a cool Jedi. If he, if he was a Jedi, I'm kind of extending on this. I would like to think he's Mace Windu, but you never know. Are those freckles on the monster's nose? I don't think they're freckles. Uh, orange cats get little black spots in their gums and nose, and I understand it's nothing to be alarmed about. He seem, they seem to come and go for him. So I noticed that too, especially, I'm sure you noticed it in a close-up video of him when I did the, the Q&A request in the 60,000 plus subscriber video recently. Thinking of your parents. What characteristics, personality, traits, preferences of each of them do you think you have? That's a good question. Wow. Obviously, a blend of both. But, oh, let's see. I don't know. I'm overall nice. I'm pretty calm. I don't know. I really don't know. We're, we're all... Everybody in our family is pretty different. We all get along, but we're all very different. My brother's very different. What do we have in common? Probably subtle things like we like to create, and that doesn't necessarily mean like building stuff, just like to become... Like are a little bit of an arts artistic vibe. Like my dad does metal work. He made this table. He made that table and, and then several others. So we definitely do have an art, artsy kind of vibe. Um, mine's more, I guess, visual. As far as I used to draw when I was younger, and I do a little bit of sketches. I would say we all have an art element, some sense of entrepreneurship. I don't know if I pronounce that right. I went to a public school, so I apologize. <laughs> but and a good sense of probably decor, I would say. And uh, personality-wise, we're all pretty, all fairly relaxed, you know, which is good. I, I'm probably the most relaxed out of everybody. My brother's fairly calm, too. This question 
I guess need some context. It says, was he on you? I think that was a reference to the 65,000 plus subscriber video where I did the super close up of his face. Yeah, he was like laying on my chest. <laughs> In your wildest dreams, did you ever see yourself as a cat person? Not really, but before Cinnabon would let me pet him outside, like before he'd even let me touch him or get even that close to him, I would have reoccurring dreams of him actually letting me pet him. And, and I thought that was really amazing. I'd wake up like, oh, that was cool. And then at that point in real life, I didn't think that day would ever come when I'd be able to pet him. I thought he was really feral and would never turn, you know, turn around. I thought at best maybe he would just consistently eat and drink water and food and stuff out on the deck, but he has really come a long way. I never thought that it would be possible to totally get him turned over to the light side, if you will. And I, I think that it's just a cool accomplishment. Do you think your brother Zach would do a good job looking after Simba over a weekend since he likes dogs more? There's a couple other questions. Hmm. You know, I, I don't know. I think he would. He's getting more used to a cat or cats. He, he tends to move too fast and it's too loud for Cinnamon or most cats to like, but I think he would be okay. My parents did a fantastic job watching him when I, my parents did a fantastic job watching him when I was gone up north. Another part of the same question. Have you read the book All Cats of Asperger's Syndrome? I have not. It sounds interesting, though. Ever thought about putting Cinnabon down in the basement when you need to vacuum upstairs? Um, I may. He would probably freak out, but I usually let him. He just goes outside, and he comes back usually within an hour or so after I've done vacuuming. Last part of the question. Would you fight off or shoot an animal if it was trying to hurt Cinnabon? Oh, absolutely. Shooting would be kind of dangerous unless I get really close because I would really not want to hit Cinnabon. And Cinnabon's only 10 pounds at wouldn't take much to for a bullet to do a lot of damage and so no matter what the unless it was like a bear or something I'm pretty confident I can wrestle anything else at least enough to for it to lose interest if it was a bear I'd probably have to probably could scare a black bear away we don't really they're presumed to be in the area but I've never seen one none of my neighbors have but they've been within 15 minutes of my house so it's a possibility but yeah, if it's something like ex, like totally freaky, like if there's a polar bear or a grizzly or something outside, I would grab a rifle as soon as I could and help little Cinnabon, but I'm pretty sure he would, that's an unlikely scenario. Does Cinnabon need when you cuddle? I don't think I've ever seen him making any biscuits. Oh, he does. It's it's probably not, he used to do it a lot more, but I don't know why he's just getting used to just having me around, but he does sometimes and it hurts occasionally if it's like on like just through like a light shirt or no shirt or whatever, but he does. Okay, top five favorite albums. Oh, let me show you what my top five favorite albums are. Thanks for the question. I like this. Okay, first album we have Guns N' Roses, Chinese Democracy. I've mentioned this album a few times. This album actually got me into Guns N' Roses. This one is kind of controversial because it took, what, like almost two decades to make. And at the same time, there were several other albums made that were not, have not re been released yet. But this is my favorite album. It's really weird. If you listen to it, there's... So many different styles of rock, and it's really quite crazy. But I like it. It's, it's a genius in a way. It's overproduced, but it's really good. And, of course, you have Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destructions. That's the album that put them on the map. That's a good one. ACDC, The Razor's Edge. I believe this is the first ACDC album I've ever bought. Bought it years ago. I like it. Thunderstruck is my favorite song. I actually have seen Axl Rose of Guns N' Roses perform Thunderstruck live, and that was oh, one of the best live performances ever. Of course, we got Black Sabbath. I really like Iron Man on this one. <laughs> Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. That's a tremendous album. And then I know this is number six, and this is only for five, but this is a hidden gem. This is Angel Down by Sebastian Bach. Sebastian Bach was the lead singer of Skid Row. This is a hidden gem, and there's three songs on here. This is a picture of him that have Axl Rose on them, and that's going to be Back in the Saddle, which is an Aerosmith cover. Love is a bitch slap. Excuse my language. Oh no, there's kids watching. I'm so sorry. Stuck inside. That's another one that has Axel on it. So I know you asked for five, but I showed you six. So these are some of my favorite rock albums, and I primarily listen to rock. Well, that's going to wrap up this questions and answers session. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.